All right, welcome to my presentation. My name is KT Walters, and I'm going to be presenting on capitalism and inequality. So, uh, you know, doing this project, uh, I really learned a lot on capitalism and inequality. Uh, me and Kale worked really hard at, at writing our paper, and before this, uh, before taking this class or even working on this project, I didn't really know too much personally on what capitalism was and what inequality was. Now, after doing this project, I've definitely learned a little bit more than uh, you know um, I knew before, and hopefully uh, I could maybe become an expert on this topic. But, uh, however, that being said, let's just get right into the presentation. So, uh, I'm gonna start off with a quote here um, from the Oxford Languages. An economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit. Now, this quote is yet brief, but effective at the same time when defining capitalism. And capitalism is notorious for a large amount of inequality among society and its members, as it is difficult for one to exist without the other. We're gonna look into that later on in the presentation. So, Inequality can, can be considered essential for motivating workers to a higher productivity as there would be minimal incentive to have a good work, work ethic and involve as an employee if everyone collected the same wages regardless. Uh, the pros and cons of the, the threat of inequality in a capitalist society can be profoundly showcased using the economic concepts of opportunity costs, supply and demand, and welfare economics. Now, I'm going to use a little example here that uh, is from my pers personal life. So I work at a grocery store and I have for the past four or five years, just as a summer job. And, uh, you know, going over this project, I, I definitely learned that, uh, you know, maybe I do work in a, in a capitalist and in a, in a inequality environment uh, because uh, being a worker there for the last four years, you know, trying to move up the ranks, trying to get higher pay and whatnot, it's, it's hard to come by. Now, um, for example, somebody that I work with that's next to me that has been there for a few years longer than me will get a raise, maybe not just based on, on their skill or their work ethic, but just solely based on how long they've been there for, which doesn't really give, you know, too much of a uh, maybe an incentive to, to work harder than I am already working. If anything, you know, it just makes me look further down the road and say, okay, I gotta be here for, you know, X amount longer to, uh, you know, eventually earn, earn a higher, higher paying uh, position. Uh, moving on here. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about opportunity cost. So opportunity cost involves way in which decisions will potentially provide the greatest return on their investments and with the least risk. So businesses and individuals have, constant, have to constantly make choices for uh, you know, regor regarding resource allocation. Now working at the grocery store, we do this all the time. We have to decide whether or not we should put out the rib steak or, or the pork roast or vice versa. So it, it's definitely, it ties into to the workplace for, for me and uh, that's kind of how the way I look at it. Uh, moving on. Uh, capitalism is known for encouraging economic growth and transformation. However, it is also criticized for creating disparities. The economic element of opportunity cost highlights the necessity of assessing trade-offs ingrained in capitalist choices. Now, capitalism and inequality go hand in hand. Supply and demand have become huge factors in how this all works. So in a capitalist system, supply and demand is what people want. So for example, you know, you go to the grocery store, you see the steak, that's what you want. That's the supply, okay? Now for, for um, I'm sorry, that's, that's the, the demand. Now the supply is how much is produced. So that's how much we're producing in the, in the back of the meat department, we're cutting the steaks. That's how much we, we have produced. Now, um, the, plethora, the plethora of these factors is <clears throat> to decide the market, market equilibrium. 
how much any one good or service is bought for and sold for. Capitalism is great at making economy, economies grow, but some people say it is what make the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Now, supply and demand also affects wages and prices, making some people wealthier than others as well. Finding and utilizing the benefits of capitalism's survival without inequality can be tricky. As a capitalist, but yet somewhat, sorry, as a capital, as capitalism needs, somewhat needs inequality to encourage new ideas and businesses, but too much can, you know, sometimes cause a problem. And other people believe we should just get rid of inequality completely. Now, that is much easier, much easier said than it is done. Creating a balance between inequality and capitalism is definitely a crucial thing that our society needs to work on and get better at. Now, another topic that we talked about was welfare economics. <clears throat> now, inequality is the sole purpose of, it, of, of its existence. Consumer and producer surpluses directly derive from the existence of a free market and its built-in inequalities. Now, in Canada, the New Democratic Party, the NDP, highlights the assertion that the new market needs government inter intervention due to its apparent shortcomings, whereas the Conservative Party believes that the market facilitates economic choice, incentives, and efficiencies. Now, ide ideally, efficiency is prioritized in society. However, due to unavoidable situation that is inequality, what is economically efficient frequently must be sacrificed in place of what is economically equitable. Now, the perks of efficiency over equity and vice versa are both well documented. Now, the choice the choice of which one benefits society further, however, lies with the opinion of particular parties and who stands with that particular party or against that party. Now, the, the advantages and disadvantages of the uncertainty that inequality creates in a capitalist market credibly display the economic concepts of opportunity costs, supply and demand, and uh, welfare economics. Simply put, however, uh, there was an article by Liberto III documented in 2023 and he states that the pros are more efficient uh, sorry state he states that the, the pros are the more efficient dis distribution of resources lower consumer prices due to market competition increased everyday quality of living standards and overall wage growth and innovation as well as intervention encouragement or sorry, invention encouragement, not intervention, invention. Now, capitalism and inequality share a somewhat symbolic relationship in that it is extremely difficult for capitalism to flourish to its most effective state without inequality striking it in its shadow. So, doing this project, I learned definitely a lot more, and it was a lot to take in. But uh, I had a good time doing this presentation. I'm going to try and pull up a graph here if I can. Oh. Here we go. So this is just an example of uh, from, from 19, 1998 to 2013, just the medium net worth. Now this is in... This is in the United States of America. So this just shows the lower class, the working class, and the middle class, and then the top 10%. So you can see here, um, 2013 compared to 1998, the lower working class had a negative 26.5 decrease. The working class had a negative 52.7 decrease, and the middle class only had a 19.1% decrease. However, if you look at the top 10%, you can see that there was a 74.9% increase in net worth 
across the United States. Now, this is something that uh, is very interesting information, and it's definitely something to think of, for sure. Now, if, you come, if I come down here, as you can see here, unemployment rate in 1998 was 4.5%. Today, 4.7%. Workforce participation rate, 67.1% in 1998. Today it's dropped almost 5%. Same thing with the inflation rate, it's dropped 1% over the last you know, 20 years when, this, when, this, uh, when these stats were taken. If we look at the federal, federal funds rate, you can see how much that has gone down from 5.35% down to 0.37%. Now, national debt, this is a big one here. If we went from 5.5 all the way up to 19.3 in 2013, well, just 10 years ago. Now, money supply, we went from 4.2 to 12.7. I got my, my information here on this graph from the wealth, wealth Inequality Problem in One Chart website. By uh, Jeff Desjardins, hosted seven years ago on June 17, 2016. So, yeah, with that being said, I, I really enjoyed doing this project. And, um, you know, I learned a lot. And uh, this is my presentation on capitalism and inequality. Hope you liked it. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's everything. So, thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you soon.